welcome to DMOP Garage. Let's go and check out what we are doing today on the 52 Barn Door Ambulance. If you don't know what this thing is, check out previous episodes in the playlist. Uh, today we've got a few things to do. We are waiting still for the brakes to come so we can potentially get this thing on the ground soon. I do have the rims which we are going to sandblast and get those painted and we also have these guys here which are from insulating covers for the heater tubes and also you can see here the clamp those factory style clamps that they use I do have a few original ones here too we can uh, potentially use as well but I just figured you know having these pipes underneath here all naked yeah I don't like the look of it you can see these are supposed to be covered so that's what we're going to do. Now we also need to wrap that section. That needs to go in there and we can wrap him as well and also wrap, uh, I think the front section here gets done as well. So yeah, let's get that done. That's one thing we can tick off. Uh, I also have put in the clutch cable. Uh, this does need to just route through here. Okay, that's the clutch cable in its position. And it lives up like that. I'm going to get another one of those little O-rings there, but that's fine. Uh, also, this shift rod, um, that can stay in there too. Yeah, all right, let's get some of these protective. Now, these aren't asbestos, obviously. The original ones uh, I found out through a little bit of research also were not asbestos. So I treated them like they were. Apparently, they were just fiberglass mats. But, um, yeah, look, you don't want to breathe this crap in anyway. So uh, we might as well start with the long one. I am going to put some gloves on <laughs> because even though it is fiberglass and I do work with it uh, a lot, you don't want to be touching this stuff so because it will get you itchy. The less skin contact, the better. Okay, so uh, now we do have our clamps here. Now what has to happen is with these, you put them through. Uh, just a tad bend them over like that just give them a bit of a crimp down so that they're nice and tight like that they actually work surprisingly well these i didn't think they were going to be any good at all uh, but they do work and i think we only use four for the middle one or it could only be three actually i will check that uh, okay, let's go and take these under the bus and get set up. Okay, so one across here. Okay, so there we go, all in position. I just put the seam to the top. I think that's the, the neatest way to do it. I think that looks pretty good. All right, we've got the other little sections to go. We'll keep going. Okay, let's get this center section in. I've just gone and already strapped it. And of course it recesses into, just gotta get this thing to bend now, of course. Just like that. Okay, take two. So we need to put the pipe in first without the cover on it. It just wouldn't expand and contract in order for me to get, get it all done. So we can now wrap our material around it. done all right we've still got little section to do at the front just there and then we 
we've got a little section at the back to do. So let's get on to that. Righto guys, so that's the rest of the padding for the feeder tubes done. What I have done now is I've just removed the reflectors and the rear lights. We're gonna get this area in here ready for painting. I'm gonna clear it all out, clean it up, scuff it back, tape up the VIN plate, because that's actually pot riveted on, so well, not pot rivet, I think it's got like a little rivet of some kind, but we can't remove it, so we'll tape that up. You can, have, you can see in here, we're just gonna get this area ready for paint. And you can see there's some welded shonky areas up there and up there that we wanna repair. These areas here, obviously that was a patch panel that they put in. So we're gonna, I just, you know, I want this to be nice. And then obviously that's not painted up there. That looks pretty crappy. So we'll mask it all up and give it a coat of, of the paint. Now with the light, we're gonna do a little bit of restoration work on these brake lights, because they're pretty shonky. And you know, they're not the best. You can see the back. I've got to be very careful because these things are very, very hard to get. Now this one here, unfortunately, it's supposed to look like that and have a bolt on the end of it. And you can see this one's pretty nice, but we're going to make these look better. This one, unfortunately, has been snapped off, and then some Muppet has gone and put a self-tapper and just screwed the self-tapper straight into the back of it like that. So I'm not going to let that fly. I'm thinking there is enough of a void between the front and the back. I don't know whether this is actually glass or plastic, but I was thinking of just putting a little tack weld, zit zit, and then a quick bit of cold air. I don't think it'll put enough heat into it to do any damage, but we're just gonna weld a, a thread back on that. I think that might be the best way to do it to make it look a bit better than what it is. We'll sandblast the bracketry and yeah, just give these a polish up and just make them look a little bit nicer. So let's go. 2000 years later. Okay, so after a little bit of a polishing, you can see this has come up a lot nicer. I just put it over the buffer with some metal polish. I've also got the rubber gasket behind it. And I just use some glass beads just to um, go over the contact areas, obviously uh, blocking off the lens there, but at least this is nice now. Now, as for the reflector, the one that was damaged, I ended up drilling and tapping it and then putting a little bolt back on it. So that's how it's supposed to be. Again, polished up the edge of it and we just need to paint this backside black now to match the other one like that this one probably needs a coating too but at least they're done uh, so they're ready to go these ones are interesting they've actually they must have been coated plated i should say because they've got like a brass or copper no it would be it'd be a copper uh, covering on them i just blasted all the rust off those so they'll be good enough so anyway at least those are done I'm still not sure what we're going to do about globes for the back of these because the incandescent globe in a 6 volt, it's just going to be really dull. And I, I don't know, I know it's not, if I go LEDs, it's not going to be original, but you really need to be able to see out of these things. And I don't want to get rear-ended, especially in this in this vehicle. So I might end up doing LED, uh, 6 volt LEDs. We are still going to go with 6 volt system. But I might end up putting some, LED, uh, some 6 volt LEDs behind that. Because at least you can change them out if you want to. So anyway, at least those bits are ticked off for now. What I have to do now, which I had forgotten about. And I'll just show you guys down here. We have a bit of a welding repair we've got to do. And if, if you have a look here, you can see there's a section here missing. This uh, part where the rubber seal for the engine uh, back section goes down. To, it's supposed to go down here like this side. You can see I've got the lamp on here. So I'm going to have to add a little piece in here and then add a piece of the that curved section to go here. Big problem is, <laughs> right above it, if you can look carefully, is the VIN number. And I do not want to damage that. So I have got enough material here to work on, but it's going to be pretty dicey. I mean, I'm going to TIG this. I'm not going to MIG it because it'll just be too rough. And then you're trying to grind this back and you'll, you'll end up just with a lot of problems. So it's rusty. I'll put the Dremel on here just to clean the metal up, but it's still not 100%. So I'm just hoping that the, the TIG welder isn't going to crack it and spatter all over the place. But anyway, we have to repair this. I can't leave it like that. So first things first, we'll just get a piece of tape. We'll tape over the back of that, draw out this exact little 
notchy part and we'll, and we'll go from there and get this uh, put in. Okay, so we'll just pop a little bit of tape behind the back of this. I reckon that looks about right. We'll go and double check it to the other side, of course. There we go. Let's just put this over here. Just want to see. I'll do a reverse image. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's go and cut this okay, out. Guys, so we have the piece, and I've, I've just gone and TIG welded it in. It was, <laughs> it was pretty close, but we're all good. Uh, we're going to use the finger sander now and just grind this back and uh, then we can continue with making that next section that's going to have to go over the top of it. So at least this was the scary part done. Uh, I didn't want to really, you know, chop into the VIN number because that would have been disastrous. So at least we're all good. So yeah, let's just give this a finger sand quickly and go from there. Okay, after the finger sander, we're all done. And our VIN number is A-OK. -okay. We haven't touched it. So as we know, that's all good. But of course, now I need to make this curved piece here. And that's not gonna be easy because I don't have a shrinker or a stretcher and you've gotta be able to curve the edges over. So come over to the bench and I'll show you what I've come up with so far. It's ghetto, but it will work. And I love ghetto sometimes. There you go. Uh, what I've done, I mean, I'm almost there. I've just got a little piece in there that I'm moving along and bending this edge over. It's still got to be uh, made a little bit better. But you can see what I did is I've got a piece of <laughs> piece of tin. I drew a curve in it and then I scored it very gently with the grinder to get my curve. And then I put some relief cuts in the sides, bent them up, then re-welded them. You can see here I've welded those and now i'm just bending it over look it's going to work it's probably not the right way to do it but that's what i've got so i'm making it i'm making it work all right so we'll just do a little bit more tappy tappy and bend those edges over and then we can just tack weld this up onto there and the rubber strip is going to be able to go through it for the engine and we're good to go okay so here is the part it's not perfect but it will do i mean you're not going to see any of it anyway but i've just put some holes so that we can tack it. It's gonna live exactly like that. And I'll just get the radius correct, like that there. Bang, 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 tack that. And then we can scuff up all in here and get painting. All right, let's weld her in. And there we have it. That should follow that nice. We've had to put the rubber piece in. I'll obviously paint all this up. Interesting that the, um, the ID or VIN plate is actually riveted on. If you look carefully, there's no screws. So they're actually riveted on and it's gone rusty. So it's not aluminum. It must be must be actually a steel plate or a tin plate, who knows? Anyway, I'm gonna try and just clean that up a little bit better because it looks a bit shonky. Yeah, we're gonna get this ready. I've got to, I just wanna do a little bit of filler on here, as I said before, and then we're gonna scuff this entire area back and just give it another coat of paint. Well, as you can see, we're masked up and I've gone over all inside here with a scotch bright pad and prep sole and I've actually put an adhesion promoter on it and we're just going to hit it straight with the cream colour. So yeah, she's all, we've got the VIN plate taped up, everything else is all taped up around here. Let's get some paint ready to rumble and get this thing painted.
Okay, let's have a look. Very difficult spot to paint, actually. There's a bit of junk just sitting there and a little bit of junk sitting there, but we'll pick that out. But that's a lot better than it was. I mean, you know, the whole top wasn't even painted. I'm just gonna let that flash a bit more and give it another go, because it's a little bit, a little bit patchy in a few spots, but painting upside down is bloody difficult. I think I'm gonna have to get myself a siphon gun, because uh, that gun I've got does not work well at all. And I do have, uh, I bought this little light that screws on the front of it, which is pretty cool. Let have a look at this. But of course it's not bright anymore, unfortunately. Anyway, we've got to clean this all out. I'll give it about 10 minutes, we'll give it another coat. And then we are good to go. Okay, let's have a bit of a looky. Oh man, that's so much nicer. Try to put a light here so you guys can see. Yeah, that's more acceptable. You can see I just gave that a bit of a scotch bright up the old plate made it look a little bit nicer you can read the vin number of course i think this is gonna do just nicely with a nice brand new 25 horsepower motor inside it all right guys well that is it for today i will catch you in the next one when we continue we've got to get those wheels down there sandblasted get the brakes keep moving forward with this thing thanks for the new subscribers and we'll catch you in the next episode